All right. Hello, everyone, again. Um, I'm not going to wait any longer because we wanted to get going and we wanted to cover our topic. And then um, I'm also very respectful of everyone's time. So um, today uh, we're going to travel to uh, Western Canada through uh, with, with Rocky Mountaineer. And we're going to talk about the Rocky Mountaineer experience and why it's so special and all about that. But, you know, just a little bit of background for um, over 30 years or so, Rocky Mountaineers has taken um, guests from all over the world. And I guess that's one of the things that is a must do experience in Canada. And one of the signature experiences in Canada. And um, they've, they've taken um, yeah, people through this amazing journey through the Canadian Rockies. And um, for those of you who are not very familiar with the Rocky Mountaineer, it's a daylight only train. Um, that means that um, overnight stay is happening at the um, other partners' uh, hotels with Rocky Mountaineer, so what, you're not really sleeping on the train. Uh, but the the, breath, the breathtaking views of the iconic West, um, Western Canada is something that everyone comes back, um, um, you know, astonished uh, when they they travel during that time. Um, it typically, and we're going to talk about all of those stuff in, in more details. So I'm just covering a little bit of details before we really um, dive into why Rocky Mountaineer and why it's so special to travel with Rocky Mountaineer through the Canadian Rockies. And the Rocky Mountaineer is also one of the most recognizable train journeys in the world. Um, so everyone um, who loves adventure and travel um, and they're looking at unique way of traveling, they, they know Rocky Mountaineer, they're, they're very familiar with it. And what makes it unique, it's its itineraries, the onboard services, um, and the impeccable luxury that, um, that, that's associated with Rocky Mountaineer and all the things, and we're again going to cover all of that in, in more details, everything served on the train is Canadian wine or food and, um, you know, amazing chefs. But, you know, let's, let's dive in. Um, I typically start the, uh, the real meat of the presentation by asking, what does travel mean to you? And I want all of us to reflect um, a short few minutes and think about what does travel mean to you, especially this year, as um, you know, everyone now knows that um, we've been in the lockdown for the past few months or so. We have not been able to travel the way that we typically travel, and it's been um, quite a very, very different year for all of us. But I'm going to read out um, this quote from Mark Twain. And um, so 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones you did. So throw off the balance, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. And that's what we are going to do as part of this journey. A little bit of background for those of you who are not very familiar with me. Um, my name is Leila Lavi, and I own a boutique travel concierge and agency called Travel Design by Leila Lavi. My background is um, actually by, so I'm an engineer by trade, and I've done my master's is in marketing analytics. So I've worked in technology analytics and uh, big corporations and consulting companies for uh, many years until I actually gave my passion a shot, which was travel. So I was so, so passionate about travel and I love to see and experience the world. And I just found it very difficult to do that on my own. And I never found anyone who could do as much of a decent job in travel planning and taking care of all the details as I did. So um, I've 
you know, I started my own business a um, few years ago, and um, my specialty is in custom-made, personalized vacations because I strongly believe that we're all very different and the way that we travel is different, the way that we value our travels are different, and I've seen it in my clients as well. So not everyone wants a luxury hotel or, um, you know, that's, that's again, that, that's very, very different how we spend our money. And I have a travel agency in the background too, because you know all the arrangements, all the bookings that um, my company takes care of that needs to happen through um, a registered travel identity in Ontario. And I have a small team. I have a very small team of um, interesting but passionate people who are uh, very, very involved in the travel. And as you can, um, I don't know how many um, I've, ha I've I've seen few um, you know few of some of my clients some of um, some of my fans I've got some hardcore fans especially um, now that since the COVID lockdown I started running these virtual travel series so on a weekly basis every Thursday um, I started running um, these type of um, series to talk about a particular destination or a type of travel. And um, so far we've traveled, um, so this week is week number 18. We've traveled to 18 different destinations. And I am so proud and so happy um, of, you know, all the places that we've traveled um, with the folks um, in the past few weeks or so where you couldn't really, um, couldn't get out of the, the house. And we, um, it, it was my way of contributing to, again, still inspiring and educating people about travel. Um, I highly encourage you to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and sign up to my newsletter because I share tons of um, travel related content and this is my passion project for life. So I am, I've taken it very seriously and I love sharing more about about travel. But today, um, as we're talking about Rocky Mountaineer, I have a very special guest that I wanted to introduce you to him. Uh, but before doing that, I forgot to mention that I'm actually a Rocky Mountaineer specialist. Um, so um, I know Rocky Mountaineer quite well. And um, it's one of the um, very interesting products that I am very proud to call it, you know, a Canadian experience. And um, I am going to introduce you to Ali, who is joining us uh, from Rocky Mountaineer. Um, Ali, do you want to turn on your video and introduce yourself to the audience? Hi everyone, my name is Ali. Um, I've been in the travel industry now for about 10 years and it's really taken me all over the world. Um, just recently, I've started working with Rocky Mountaineer as a business development manager. So. I work with our partners to kind of maintain the relationships, help uh, help support them, as well as run some of these consumer virtual consumer events. So really happy to talk about some of the amazing history that uh, that Canada and Western Canada specifically has to offer. So really looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. So let's let's dig in further. Um, so why? Why this experience should be on your bucket list. Um, the Canadian Rockies are one of um, our country's biggest tourism draws and it's home to five pristine national parks which collectively comprise a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So anyone in the world um, knows about Western Canada and again those who are into um, experiencing the world differently have heard um, the Rocky Mountaineer or the train that runs in the western side of the Canada. So this region stretches um, along the border between the province of British Columbia and Alberta and there are spectacular 
um, landscape and sceneries on both sides. And uh, for those of you who have, you know, traveled to British Columbia and Alberta, you would agree with me that um, I have not seen anything like that, um, that much beauty in my life, or even, quite frankly, that many wildlife um, when you are traveling in the in, in those regions because there are bears there are you know different kinds of animals that you're constantly um coming across um in um, in the road or where when you are on the, on the train um and so um why do visitors flock to the canadian rockies um so because of those winning combinations of snow-capped mountain peaks, turquoise glacier-led, um, uh, uh, glacier-fed lakes, um, abundance of wildlife, as I mentioned, you will see all sort of animals across the way. And those charismatic mountain views and mountain towns, um, and again, the hospitality is something that um, Western Canada is also very famous for. And all those picture perfect, you know, postcards that you see on those views are, are so amazing. And the other thing that I wanted to point out here is um, these amazing, you know, experiences. Um, so um, the scenery has been attracting a lot of travelers since the Canadian Pacific Railway completed its route uh, back in 18, 1885. So that was a true piece of Canadian history and an incredible engineering to be able to build that railway. And in um, 1990, um, a love for that tra uh, train love um, and train travel and combining it with the beauty um, and the country's heritage inspire the founder of um, Rocky Mountaineers, Peter Armstrong, to launch the Rocky Mountaineer experience. And since then, a lot of um, you know, guests had the chance to see this, this spectacular region differently. Some fun facts that I thought you may not know um, about the Rocky Mountaineer, and then after that, we're going to uh, dig into um, more about the train experience and why it's so unique. Um, so as I mentioned uh, briefly, uh, Rocky Mountaineer, it, it, it is a world record breaker because in 1996, the Rocky Mountaineer set the record for the longest passenger train in the Canadian history. Um, it connected 37 cars together that time. And in 1999, it outdid itself with 41 cars um, together. And um, for some of you who are um, I'm, uh, following Bachelorette. Um, so it was, um, so Rocky Mountaineer was once the backdrop for a reality TV dating show back in 2005. Um, some of you may know Jillian Harris. So Jillian Harris was the contestant then. She spent four days on the train with her um, suitors as it traveled from Vancouver to Banff. And um, the TV show operated an exclusive train for the show, including two special lounge cars, one for the men and the other one for Jillian. And um, there were like so many scenes and experiences um, with that. And um, the last fun fact that I wanna highlight here is um, this rail route united Canada. So as you all know, Canada is a young country, um, on July 1st, 1867, the provinces of Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, and New Nova Scotia came together as a confederation while British Columbia was on the other side of the mountain range. And on July 4th of 1886, a train pulled into Port Moody, British Columbia, and um, then it was the time that we had the first scheduled transcontinental journey across Canada, uniting the country. And one of the things that Ali will talk more is about one of those routes that Rocky Mountaineer offers, which is called Rocky Mountaineer's First Passage. And um, that goes from um, Vancouver to Banff and still travels along 
part of this historic railroad, which was, you know, back in that time, um, an extraordinary effort of engineering that they put all of that together. So I am going to pass it on to Ali now to talk more about um, the experience itself. Ali, do you want me to stop and, and then you start on your own or do you want me to continue? Good, I can see your screen. You are on mute, Ali. Sorry about that. It's Hi. Okay. Uh, okay, so thank you very much for that introduction. And again, yeah, the, the Rocky Mountaineer is really a, a perfect complement to just the sights and scenery and history of Western Canada. Uh, I think the picture over here really shows the example that the real star of the show are the sights and the scenery and the wildlife that you're going to experience um, while in Western Canada. So just a, just a couple of notes about Rocky Mountaineer. We are a, a Canadian owned, proudly Canadian owned, uh, family owned company. And this was supposed to be our 30th year in operation. Uh, it's a bittersweet year because it's our 30th year anniversary. However, we haven't been able to um, run our uh, run our journeys just because of the restrictions going on and um, uh, it's really been a really sad year but we're looking at the light at the end of the tunnel and um, we're looking at uh, welcoming passengers in 2021. So I really want to start with uh, when we operate because that's the big question is when do we travel when is the best time to travel and as Layla mentioned, we are a daylight only journey. So we operate from spring through spring through fall. So the last week of April to the first week of October is when our journeys take place. Uh, the reason why we, we operate during that time is because that's when we're gonna have the most daylight hours. So we don't want people to miss the amazing sights and scenery by traveling in the dark. Uh, so, and the train does only travel at about 45 kilometers an hour. So uh, we find that September or uh, April through October is when uh, it allows us the most daylight uh, hours to experience the journey. We start out in spring and spring is a really great time to travel. It's kind of that off peak time to travel. Uh, it's when things start to thaw out, the snow starts to melt, the plants start coming back to life, the eagle and the osprey are flying back up north and mama bear and her cubs are coming out of hibernation. It's really a great time to see wildlife. The bears aren't scared away. They're pretty groggy and uh, they won't be scared away by the train if it's coming, but coming down. Uh, it's also not as busy. A lot of people travel to the Rocky Mountains in the wintertime for skiing and snowboarding. And by the time spring rolls around, they've already left, but the summer crowds haven't quite come in just yet. So it's a really great time to kind of feel a little bit more at one with nature. Uh, it's not quite as busy and it's, it's a great time to travel. Uh, just one of the downsides to keep in mind about spring is the weather could still be inclement and uh, temperamental. So you could be wearing uh, like a t-shirt in Vancouver and you could be wearing a park uh, by the time you get into the Rocky Mountains or vice versa if you're going from the rocks, starting out in the Rockies, you could be stripping off layers literally on the train as you're headed into Vancouver. So the weather, the weather does fluctuate quite a bit uh, depending on where you are uh, and depending on what day it is. The summer is the most popular time to travel. Uh, like Leila mentioned, uh, like Banff and a lot of areas within the Rockies are UNESCO World Heritage Sites and people from all over the world travel to uh, the Rocky Mountains to to experience the nature, the wildlife, and just the majesty that the Rockies bring. Uh, 
what that means is during the summertime, it's really, really busy. Uh, it does have the warmest days and the longest days, uh, but you want to keep in mind when traveling in the summertime, even if you're, even if you have a timed pass for the gondolas in Jasper, you might still have to wait in queue because there's a lot of people that travel during this time. And the prices are typically higher too. So the, the, it's like premium pricing typically during the summertime as well. Yes, that's right. Uh, so autumn and spring are considered shoulder seasons or off peak times. And you're going to find the pricing is a little bit better then. Um, autumn is one of the most popular times for us to travel as well. September may be uh, a number one or number two month any given year. And really, this image kind of shows how beautiful the scenery is in the fall in the Rocky Mountains. Uh, just seeing the different colors within the trees. Uh, the salmon rush happens in, uh, in September. So it's a great time to see the eagle and the osprey and the bears fishing for salmon. Uh, if you're into wildlife, spring and fall are the two best times of year to travel. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our rail routes. And the first one I'm going to talk about is our first passage to the west. And this is our oldest and most historic um, route. Uh, it starts out uh, in Vancouver, continues onwards with a sleep overnight in Kamloops and then continues onwards to Lake Louise or Banff, and it goes one way in either direction. So you can really begin in Vancouver, or you could begin in Lake Louise, Banff. So the first passage to the west, it uh, really is the Canadiana history. If you're, if you're a train buff or really interested in the history of the nation, um, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, British Columbia was almost a U.S. state. Uh, it really hinged on Sir John A. Macdonald's vision for the country to unite the nation east and west by rail. And when the rail was initially built out, uh, the Rocky Mountains presented a big challenge. And initially they had a incline that they uh, built the tracks through, but that caused a train derailment and some fatalities, and they really had to send a lot more engineers back to the mountains to kind of figure out the Rocky Mountains. So what they wound up doing was they built a 1.9 kilometer uh, figure eight spiral tunnel through two mountains. Uh, it really is a modern feat of engineering and it is something that people from all over the world will come just to see the spiral tunnels on, on this route. Uh, one of the biggest sites that you'll pass by is Clargarrickey, which is where the last railroad spike was driven into the ground, uniting the nation east and west. Uh, a lot of history is uh, seen on this trip. One of my favorite sites along the first passage to the west is this mountain back here. It's Castle Mountain, which has a ton of history, a ton of name changes as well, dating back to uh, World War II. So the first passage to the West is the most popular and the most historic um, and the oldest route that we operate on. If you're interested in some of the, some of the early pioneer sites like Hell's Gate, uh, Cisco Crossing, Castle Mountain, and just the rich history that the nation has, the first passage to the West is, is a great option to look into. And if you don't mind me, Ali, I'd jump in here quick for a second. So one of the other features of traveling with Rocky Mountaineers is the host or those experts on the train, they give you all that education along the way. So it's not that you're driving on your own and you don't really understand significance of a lot of things along the way. You are getting all those education, which is, uh, which is really important and interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the storytelling on board the train is um, absolutely second to none. Our, our hosts are really engaging with passengers and really talking about just the nature that uh, comes up. Uh, we do have spotters on the train uh, that will let uh, 
our hosts know that if there's a bear or a moose or a coyote uh, or some eagles that they will slow down and it'll be a great photo taking opportunity and they'll also talk about some of the history that uh, the wildlife as well as uh, the major historic sites have. So the next journey I want to talk about is the journey through the clouds and like the first passage to the west it will uh, do the same journey from Vancouver to Kamloops but it goes north up into Jasper. And in this image over here, you can see that mountain in the back, that's Mount Robson, which is the tallest peak in all of the Canadian Rockies. Um, it, this is a very special picture of Mount Robson. Uh, normally you can't see the peak of the mountain because it has its own weather system up there. So this is actually a really special picture of Mount Robson. The journey through the clouds is more of a romantic getaway. Uh, it'll start in Vancouver and continue onwards into Kamloops and then split off uh, from Kamloops to, um, to Jasper. And it really goes more into the wilderness. So as you can see from some of the images, there's not really any roads that are around. A lot of the areas that uh, the train travels through have been completely untouched since the railroad was initially built. So that's where the really the difference is from maybe trying to drive through the Rocky Mountains to actually taking the train. It's a lot of areas that you're going to visit are areas that you can't get to just because there, there are no roads. Uh, one of the greatest highlights on the journey through the clouds is Pyramid Falls. So Pyramid Falls is a 300 foot uh, waterfall that gets split by uh, this big shale pyramid type rock and it, the water branches off into a, a type of pyramid. And the train gets actually so close that uh, if you're on one of the outdoor viewing platforms, you can actually get the mist from from the waterfall that's that's how close we actually pass by so a really really amazing uh journey and a more of a romantic kind of getaway for the rocky mountains and the last journey i want to talk about that we offer is the rainforest to gold rush and if anybody's ever been to the rockies this is the trip that I typically recommend um, because it's guaranteed you're going to see things that you've never seen before. So this is a three-day journey versus the other journeys, which were two-day journeys, stopping over in Kamloops. This one uh, begins in Vancouver and it actually hugs the coast up to Whistler. Uh, you arrive in Whistler at about 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., get about a half day there, and then continue onwards into Quinell, and then onwards to Jasper. What this journey really does is it highlights really dramatic changes in geography and typography. Uh, you start off in Whistler, where it's a very temperate rainforest type of atmosphere. And then it continues onwards into Quinell, which is very arid and desert-like. It's an old mining town. Quinell is one of the oldest mining towns. I think it's actually the oldest mining town in North America, which is where the rainforest to gold rush name comes from. Uh, it turns out Quinell doesn't actually have any gold <laughs> over there, so, uh, but they still maintained the township and it's, it's a midway point for us uh, before continuing onwards to Jasper. And then you all, uh, end up in the Rocky Mountains. So it's a very dramatic change of scenery that takes place along this trip and a lot of history as well. I wanna talk a little bit about our rail services and um, I want to avoid using the term classes of service because really the amenities that you receive in both of our rail services are going to be equal. It's just some, uh, there's some benefits and drawbacks depending on which level you want to choose. So I'm gonna start out by talking about our Silverleaf level of service. And Silverleaf is our entry level of service. However, it is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, as far as the seats go, there's more room in these seats than a domestic business class flight. 
Um, your meals are all included, all drinks are included, and premium spirits are included. As Layla mentioned, everything is sourced locally, and the meals are made on board the train. Uh, there's a trolley that comes down and actually provides you with linens and real glassware, real plateware, and actual silverware. It's not like a, a tea, um, an airplane plastic dinner. Uh, it's actually meals that are made on board the train and served on actual ceramics. The real benefit of uh, the silver leaf level of service is you can notice there it's a one story semi domed car. If you're a little bit on the taller end, um, over 6'4, six, 6'5, six, uh, you may feel a little bit cramped in the gold leaf level of service, but silver leaf level of service has plenty of headroom. They have really large picture windows, so great for those photo taking opportunities. And some passengers don't want to have to leave their seat uh, in order to have a meal. So the silver leaf level of service, there's actually uh, the trolley that comes by and provides you the meals at your seat. So you don't miss those photo taking opportunities when they do present themselves. Uh, so those are really the benefits uh, of the silver leaf level of service over the gold leaf level of service. Again, all the wine is from the Okanagan Wine Valley. The beer is craft brewed beers from BC. The salmon are from the rivers that we pass by. Uh, the beef is Alberta beef. We try to source everything we can locally. We do have spirits that um, are international as well. So premium top shelf spirits, all included. You can see that the windows are really, really large. Uh, I kind of liken them to like downtown Toronto condo windows. They're practically floor to ceiling. So you get really magnificent uh, views for taking photographs. Which brings me on to our gold leaf level of service. Gold Leaf is our flagship. It's a custom built bi-level panoramic domed car, which on the bottom level is where, uh, where passengers will actually have their meals. Um, meals are done in two seatings. So group one will have their meal first uh, on the first day, and then they'll have their meal second on the, on the next day and basically alternate. And the dining is done on the dining car, which is uh, just underneath where everybody sits. Uh, as you can notice, the it's not a two-story car. It's more like a one and a half story. So the headroom in the gold leaf level of service might be a little bit less than what you'd experience in silver leaf. Uh, you do want to allocate about 90 minutes for breakfast and lunch because uh, the meals are three course meals. But as you can see, the picture windows in the dining car are a little bit smaller, actually quite a bit smaller than the silver leaf level cars. And that's where people may feel that, you know what, I don't wanna have to leave my seat. Uh, I wanna be able to have my meal and still be able to take some photographs uh, if it does come up. That's where silver leaf may be um, a benefit for them. The upper level is really the standout uh, and the star of the show for, for Rocky Mountaineer. Um, it's a panoramic glass domed UV protected um, uh, glass uh, cabin. And the seats are climate controlled seats, which is really beneficial when you're traveling in spring or falls, because it can be a little bit chillier depending on where we are in the Rocky Mountains. Again, all drinks and meals are included in both levels of service uh, and charging docks are available in both levels of service as well. Uh, so if you wanted to charge your phone or your camera, that's entirely possible. Uh, we don't have Wi-Fi on board the trains, however. This image is one of my favorites because it really highlights how magnificent uh, the views are. Because uh, you sit up top on the gold leaf level of service, um, you get a little bit of a better vantage point. So you can see that you're practically at the top of the trees. 
Uh, so you get fantastic views uh, on the gold leaf level of service. You'll actually notice that there's a little bit of a tint. That's a UV protective film um, on the panoramic dome. And again, the air is passed through air from the Rockies uh, with, um, with the uh, filtered. The outdoor viewing platform is specific to the gold leaf level of service. And speaking of the crisp mountain air, this is one of the biggest highlights of our gold leaf level of service. Uh, the outdoor viewing platform, I mean, I have guests and colleagues who will spend half their journey on the outdoor viewing platform. It really lets you get that much closer to the scenery and to the nature and really provides amazing photo taking opportunities um, while you're on board the train and just taking in the sights and scenery. This is Cisco Crossing over here that we're, that we're passing by. As you can see, the bridge goes over the track. So as we mentioned, we're a daylight only journey and we have uh, two different levels of hotels. So there's Silverleaf, which is more moderate hotels. You can liken them to the Sheridan or the Marriott's um, or the Holiday Inns. And the Gold Leaf level of service is our higher end hotels like the Fairmonts, the Penn Pacific, the Rimrock hotels. Uh, again, we can we can actually be very flexible and mix and match levels of service. So if you prefer to sit in the gold leaf car, but want to do silver leaf hotels, that's entirely possible pre and post. Uh, if you wanted to do silver leaf car, but do gold leaf level hotels, that's entirely possible as well. The, it's entirely customizable up to you. To give you an example of some of our uh, hotel partners, this is, um, the Brewster's Mountain Lodge in, in Banff. And this is the famous uh, Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise, which sits right on Lake Louise, which is probably one of the most Instagrammable places in the world. To give you an example of some of the Silverleaf hotel rooms, uh, this is basically what you can expect from our Silverleaf and Goldleaf level uh, hotel rooms. Now, when you're actually uh, getting to the train station, your luggage will be ported to the hotel. It won't actually travel on the train. Uh, once you disembark the train car, you'll be given your room key and you'll board the shuttle bus. It'll take you to your hotel and you'll be pre-checked in. Your, your luggage will be waiting for you in your hotel room. Uh, once you freshen up, you can take in the sights if you wanted to walk along the boardwalk in Kamloops or have a bite to eat at the Salted Pig, uh, that's entirely possible. And then get some rest and then meet back at the train station. Uh, in the morning, you just get ready, leave your luggage and uh, head down to the coach. Your luggage will automatically be ported over to the next hotel. Just talking a little bit about the destinations uh, and the highlights. Uh, Banff is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is one of the most phenomenal places in the world. It truly is uh, spectacular. This photo really doesn't do it justice. There's just something about like walking out of a restaurant or walking out of a pub and or a shop and walking into the middle of the street and seeing this majestic mountain in the backdrop. It, it really is a sight to behold and uh, you owe it to yourself to, to go to Banff and, and see it for yourself because it is absolutely phenomenal. Lake Louise is one of the most unique places in the world. Um, at the back of this picture, there's uh, a glacier that feeds into the lake. Um, the glacier, when it runs down the mountain, it actually collects this mineral, it's called rock flower. And when it settles at the bottom of the lake and the light reflects off the rock flower, it gives it this really unique blue tinge uh, that's very specific to Lake Louise. So that's how, it, how Lake Louise gets its color. I wouldn't recommend swimming in there because it is glacier water and quite cold, 
but if you're if you're feeling frisky then then absolutely you can take a dive in uh towards the left there are canoes that you can rent while there and there's tons of parks there's tons of hiking trails for all levels of experience whether you're a beginner moderate or experienced in and around uh, lake louise and uh finally jasper Jasper is probably the place you want to go to if you want to see the wildlife. Guaranteed to be able to see that in Jasper. There's a ton of different parks. Uh, there's the Athabasca Glaciers. Uh, there's the Columbia Ice Fields. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It's the Skywalk, which is 250 feet above the rainforest or above the forest uh, in Jasper. I think at the very back you can see part of the Columbia ice fields, which really you can stop anywhere along the Columbia ice fields and, and get a magnificent view. Uh, this skywalk is usually never this empty. <laughs> usually you have to get there pretty early in the day or later in the evening uh, for it to be a little bit less packed, especially during the summertime. During the spring and fall, it might be a little bit more like this earlier in the morning. Uh, just going over some of our awards, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but we've been recognized as one of the best rail operators by global, uh, by global travel brands. Um, and we have a rich history. Uh, so you, I just want to let you know that rest assured, uh, we've we have a pretty good history of making sure we treat our customers extremely well and provide extraordinary adventures. So I wanna talk about health and safety with everything that's going on in the world today. Um, and with the coronavirus and the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, what Rocky Mountaineer is doing to ensure that not only our employees are, are both use, uh, maintaining health and safety, but we're abiding by health and safety to our guests. So most likely what's gonna be taking place next year is social distancing on board the train. Um, again, our capacities in Gold Leaf typically run anywhere from 60 to 70 guests but we're most likely gonna see that drop down to about half. So anywhere from 30 to maybe 35 uh, on any given gold leaf level car. And anywhere from 25 to 27 in our silver leaf level of service. Um, guests are most likely gonna be pre-screened and temperature checks being taken prior to boarding. Uh, we are using um, the misters that the airlines are using to disinfect their cabins. We're going to be using that on board our train, as well as passengers on any given car are not going to be um, going on a coach bus with passengers from another car. So the same group that you're traveling with on board uh, the cabin of the train is who you'd be traveling with on board the coach bus to take you to your hotels. So kind of minimizing the interaction wherever we can with guests. Uh, again, we have a full health and safety guideline. I can probably spend an hour going over all the details um, just on health and safety, but all the details can be found and the most up-to-date details can be found on rockymountaineer.com. I just wanna talk about our current promotion. So currently, we to offer the most flexibility, um, we have reduced our deposits down to twenty-five dollars to secure space for that twenty twenty. <laughs> that is insane. The twenty-five dollars. Yeah. It's just a twenty-five dollar deposit. It's at, and really the only reason we're charging twenty-five dollars is because we have to charge something uh, for our system to recognize it. it it's a technology thing. Um, so we had it where we were able to actually, we tried to actually do um, uh, a free, um, a free uh, reservation for 2021, but it just isn't possible technology, technology wise. So $25 to secure space for 2021 and up until um, August 28th, if you 
if you book a deposit for 2021, we're actually offering um, four additional perks for packages that are eight days or longer, for qualifying packages of eight days or longer. So it's two free hotel nights, a free airport transfer, and a free dinner, which really is, it says it's about an $800 value in, in perks, but knowing how much hotels cost in Vancouver, it could very well be over $1,000 in, in terms of value. So it's the best promotion that we, that we ever have. Uh, again, if you're interested in learning a little bit more, please do reach out to Layla. Yes, absolutely. So um, what I actually wanted to talk about, and I just got back from a family trip um, sailing in Rideau Canal, which was um, another um, one of those other unique experiences that you can in fact have in Canada, which is a self-driving boat. And uh, while we were there, we were also reflecting on some of our other family trips and another amazing family trip that we had was um, our trip to Western Canada and the Rockies and um, how much uh, fun we had as a family uh, with, uh, and it was such an amazing trip. And um, one of the other things that I've sort of like taken into account for those virtual travel series um, is again, we are, all of us are so, um, we, we are so much one to travel again, but it's just a matter of um, what type of travel and how the new safe type of traveling would look like. And um, for me, one of the other things that stands out is um, doing experiences and traveling in a way that it's, um, you know, less crowded area, you're doing less interaction with folks. And um, Rocky Mountaineer is also another great example of, um, you know, you'd be spending a lot of time in nature and not in a metropolitan crowded um, type of city going from um, one sightseeing to, to, a, to another one. And that's why it also makes it a very, very unique experience. And again, all the other precautions that they're taking into account. Um, Rocky Mountaineer canceled all the 2020 um, departures and now we're looking forward to the 2021 and what that looks like and you know the the $25 deposit is just it's it's a no-brainer it's 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 a money that we spend in in Toronto to get um, a pizza quite frankly uh, a box of pizza for us would probably be $25 or more um, as a deposit. And again, um, these are one of those unique experiences that um, you do want to have in your life. At least that's sort of like, that's, that's my view that you do want to have those unique experiences in life. Um, so um, I, um, I also, before, before we wrap up, I just wanted to make sure that we answer all of the questions. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to, to write it write up in the chat box or um, I actually have some private chat um, messages that um, we could, uh, or feel free to unmute yourself or, you know, show up your hand and we'll unmute you. Um, so one of the, um, so there's some questions about pricing. Um, so, um, Ali, I don't know if you want to take that one, but I guess my view would be it's very um, depends on the time, the itineraries, um, and um, it's it's not it's not a simple answer. Yeah, I, could, I could take over that question. So um, we've kept our rail pricing flat for 2021 and 2022. Uh, so. As far as rail pricing goes, we haven't had a change in that from this year to next year or the year after. Now, what I've seen from some hotels and some tour partners is there, depending on the day, uh, there could be um, an increase in their pricing just because, again, people haven't really been able to travel this year. So a lot of people are interested in traveling next year. Um, for example, with Rocky Mountaineer, September is an extremely busy month for us. And we already have blackout dates for quite a number of dates in September for 2021 already. So all those people that 
either were booked for this year and have to book for next year or people that just haven't been able to travel this year at all and are interested in traveling because we're getting a lot of those as well. Um, next year is looking really busy and some of our suppliers have seen an increase in their cost. And again, it really comes down to what type of hotels uh, you want to choose um, as well as what tours you're looking at doing. So the pricing is a little bit up in the air. If you have a, a date range in mind and how many days you want to go away and whether or not you want to do a self-drive package or if you wanted to do coach touring, uh, let Layla know and uh, she can inquire with our inside sales team. Absolutely. Um, okay, so um, any, any other questions? So we did cover about some of the, uh, the routes and, um, uh, and we talked about those two levels of services and what does that look like and how they're different. We also covered the best time, which was, you know, depending on what, what you wanted to see, what you wanted to experience, that would also uh, make a big difference. Um, I've traveled to, um, I've traveled in summertime and in the fall, and I guess fall would be also a very great time because the prices would be low, as well as the fall season, um, the, the colors would be stunning. And then still days are quite long. Um, and it's, you know, the, the, the crowd who typically comes during the summertime, they're, they're gone by then. Um, and that would make it a great time. But um, if, you know, you don't have any other questions, uh, or if you do, feel free to reach out to me. Um, okay, so there are some questions actually. Do you have a choice of starting journey in Vancouver or in Alberta? I personally prefer uh, starting the journey in Vancouver uh, and ending in Alberta, so doing an eastbound journey because you start out in this really great city, Vancouver, where there's tons to do and see. Uh, but as you leave the city, uh, the scenery just gets more dramatic and dramatic. Uh, so you start leaving the city, start seeing the countryside, seeing some of the sites like Cisco Crossing or Pyramid Falls, depending on which tour you're on. And then gradually you start to see the mountains start to build up. And I personally prefer that. I wouldn't say that there's any any right or wrong way to travel, uh, but personally, I prefer Vancouver to Alberta. But the ch the choice of either going from Vancouver to uh, Banff or Jas Banff or um, Lake Louise or the other way around is something that it, it depends on the dates and the routes is totally doable. So you've got the choice. Okay, excellent. I don't see any other questions here, but if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is Layla at traveldesignbylayla.com and at Travel Design by Layla on Instagram, Facebook. And if you're not on my newsletter, feel free to do so. So for next week, we're actually going to talk about um, the lovely topic of travel insurance. So travel insurance is something that um, it's been talked about a lot and um, I'll, and feel free to to check out the website and the Facebook, uh, the Facebook uh, for all the previous tours that we have had. So we've been to Morocco, south of Spain, Antarctica, Safari, to East Africa and South Africa and a um, few other trips here in Canada. We've been to Newfoundland and Labrador, um, and, um, and again, a few other local places um, in, in, in Canada. But feel free to check out traveldesignbylayla.com uh, for all the other recordings, as well as, um, uh, as well as, you know, you could see all those videos on uh, Facebook as well. And if you have any other questions, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to answer all of those. But stay tuned for next week to talk about everything travel insurance related. 
um, and all the FAQs about the travel insurance, especially during the COVID time, uh, which is uh, you know one of one of the very very tricky things because a lot of people uh, are separating out the traveling versus the insurance, and I uh, believe that they actually go hand in hand, and you just wanted to make sure that you are covered no matter where you're going. Um, so. Thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and you took something with you and you learned something new. Ali, thank you so much for spending your time and uh, time with us and sharing about the Rocky Mountaineer, the different type of experiences uh, with us. I really appreciate it. It was so much fun having you here. Thanks, Thanks. Ali. Yeah, thank you, Ali, again. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.